that is established and settled in heaven. And therefore, King of all the glory, we come with a heart of thanksgiving, Lord, to tell you, mighty God of Israel, we are so grateful for your goodness, for your mercy upon our lives, my Lord. We are not consumed because your mercies are new every morning, and it is still morning. And today we receive our package of mercy, Lord, to be prosperous, to be healthy, to be righteous, to be holy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, mighty God of Israel. Spirit of the living God, take over this service. Teach us the word of God. Reveal Jesus unto us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you so very much. Good morning to all of you and welcome in Jesus' mighty name. We are going to uh, eat the bread of God together. Some of you I haven't seen you for quite a long time. It's always a pleasure to see you online. Uh, in Chinia Kyoko, I've never seen you since uh, COVID. Uh, I think that should have been March, maybe. I don't know, even longer than that. Uh, my brother from Ghana, Evan Akwantuo, God bless you so very much. Welcome all of you in Jesus' mighty name. And the Lord, I am sure, will bless us today in Jesus' powerful name. And therefore, uh, we are going to just... Um, we are continuing with uh, what we started. As you know, I said we started Christian restitution uh, uh, in marriage. Restitution is a doctrine. If you want to go to heaven, there are doctrines that you must know. Number one, you must be born again. You must know what is holiness because without holiness, no man shall see God. And I said holiness is not righteousness. You must know the doctrine of sanctification and you must also know restitution and every other doctrine, healing, faith, all those kind of things in Jesus' mighty name. So we are still in a Christian restitution and we've been talking about marriage and today we are going to talk about vile affections. Some of you think these some things you do are Christian, vile affections, invisible bonds, of the soul. Some people call them soul ties, but uh, you can't really uh, uh, measure on that uh, when you want to look in scripture. Hallelujah. And therefore, as we go forth, you remember uh, last time we had talked about the issue of uh, uh, separation, divorce, and remarriage, and that's where I want to start so that now we can jump to uh, vile affections because vile affections are, may, are very much uh, uh, connected to marriage or uh, in Jesus' mighty name. And therefore, we are going to start there. We just are going to uh, uh, do a recap of what we said about uh, marriage, remarriage, uh, divorce, and uh, separation. And we are going to the book of Romans 7. Allow me to read there before we dive into today's topic uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that the Spirit of God shall give us flow today, that we shall operate under the action of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, and that there is no weapon raised against us that shall prevail today in Jesus' powerful name. And before we continue, if you are able to get me, if I am audible, if I am clear, so that I don't continue and realize I was preaching to myself, please uh, put a comment there so that I will know that uh, I am audible and uh, uh, when, once I confirm that we can go on in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, uh, I also urge you to share the uh, broadcast in Jesus' mighty name. Share the broadcast so that the word of God can go uh, uh, to many people. It is a form of evangelism in Jesus' mighty name. And therefore, if you are able to hear me, I am waiting because I know sound travels a bit uh, different in different networks. If you are able to get me loud and clear, uh, that is Jose Emmanuel, you must be on a very fast network. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to read uh, the book of Romans chapter 7. I'm reading verse 1 to 3. We just want to uh, uh, do a recap of what we said last time so that because it's a continuing topic so that we can go together. Or do you not know, I'm reading the book of Romans chapter 7, uh, verse 1 to 3. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion of a man as long as he lives? For a woman who has a husband is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. There is no adulteress, though she marries another man. Hallelujah. Then we talked about, uh, I, 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 as we were talking about divorce, we say that God did not give any allowance for divorce. And I showed you uh, the reasons why Moses allowed the children of Israel to divorce their wives. It was because of the hardness of their hearts. And therefore we said, 
Uh, God did not allow that, but there is a law called the law of separation, and you find it in 1 Corinthians, because sometimes things can fall apart. You find it in 1 Corinthians, I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. 1 Corinthians, and I am going to read uh, chapter 7, verse 39, and we see what Apollo, Apostle uh, Paul advised. Uh -huh. A wife, uh, that's just the same uh, scripture I had read. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whoever she wishes only in the Lord. The law of separation is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and then I'm going to read uh, verse 11. Verse 11. I, 10 and 11. Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, a wife not is not to depart from her husband. But... If she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And therefore, when you leave your spouse, that you are separated, maybe the marriage has become risky. I said, don't stay somewhere and become a statistic. Then you fall under another set of laws. And we are talking about the law of the Spirit, which is grace, the law of the New Testament, that you cannot remarry. And I do know, children of God, this kind of preaching hurts. But I did not write the Bible. I know it has, it pricks the soul. That kind of pricking is called, uh, is called uh, conviction. If a man says he is a Christian, he is a pastor, apostle, bishop, whoever, despite the fact that they are preaching fire, if they have married another woman or another man for that matter, and their first legal husband liveth, the Bible has called them adulterers. And the Bible says there is no adulterer that shall enter the kingdom of God. And those of you who are subjecting yourself under such people, you do not care about your soul. Because a man that is already convicted to enter fire cannot lead you to heaven. The Bible calls them jackals, wild dogs, jackals, umbamwitu. You know the Bible and you do not want to obey it because now you are tired of your wife. What you do is you leave your wife in Langata, you go to Kitengela, you go to Langata, you open a big church. People will be coming there calling you papa. Demons will papa you in hell. You must do restitution. That is not your wife. If that woman you have married has never been married, she is a fornicator inside the marriage. And do that as a wife and married another, another person, you are an adulterer. And neither fornicators nor adulterers will enter the kingdom of God. They that do those things, they shall be outside the gates of heaven. If anybody is preaching the gospel on your fourth marriage and you're saying the church is coming, Cathedral of hell, you are in the, in the association of the, the association of transgressors. That is why you want to subject yourself. Hallelujah. Follow such people at your own peril because you don't care about your soul. And you know, the Bible tells us we should not have any fellowship with the works of darkness. Ephesians 5, 11 to 12. We should have got no fellowship with such. You cannot, if you want to go to heaven, and I told you, heaven is not Uhuru Park. Or Aboretum, where you just go and enter the way you want to enter. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And the earth is a preparatory ground. You don't go to heaven by luck. You prepare very well in all holiness, in all righteousness. And you must be born again. That one you must understand. You must be born again. We are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 5, and I am going to be reading verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, rather expose them. Have no fellowship with the fruits of with the fruits of unrighteousness, of darkness. Hallelujah. Let us be encouraged to use the Bible as our basis and our benchmark. Everything that I preach or somebody else preach. You must be a Berean. Use the Bible as a benchmark, as a basis. The word of God is the plumb line. We must use this to measure whatever we release if we say we are preaching. Otherwise, we will just be uh, doing secular humanistic uh, talk. Like a talker, there is someone in here, hey, praise the Lord. You must go where you are celebrated. Don't stay whether you, where you are, you are tolerated. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Jesus didn't say that we must go where we are celebrated. Jesus said, go ye into the whole world to make disciples, teaching them all things. And if we are go where we are celebrated, that is not the gospel. That is a secular humanistic talk. It is unbiblical. We are not called to be celebrated. And that is the dangerous living in the gospel that if you want to go to heaven, you must be very careful when you are listening to people preaching. That is dangerous living. You must watch over it. Others say we are praying and the slaying. That is not the language of the kingdom of heaven. That is not the language of the kingdom of God. You know that is the language of the children of Satan serving another God. Who is a slay queen? I want to define a slay queen to you. A slay queen is simply a woman or a man anointed by Satan to slay men or women for him. Is that a vessel to, to saturate sexual lusts. That is a vessel of Satan. And some I see some pastor's wife, it is a slaying Friday. Continue slaying. You will stay slay until you go to hell. You are spreading, you are spreading sexual lust. Haven't you ever heard Matthew 5, 28? That any man that look at that a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery or fornication in her heart, in his heart. Haven't you ever read the Bible? Who are you slaying? Those are this kind of living must be watched in the gospel. We are praying and slaying. Since you are to kulaga kwa macho. That is a demonic language. The Bible in Matthew 5.28 ime kukataza kukula kwa macho. God has called us to be holy. There is no scripture in the Bible that called you to be sexy. And if we are not going to be careful as children of God, we are going to follow motivational speakers instead of following the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, sit down. Count the cost of following Christ. And there is a reason why the Bible says count the cost. It does not say count the loss. There is a difference between a cost and a loss. There is no loss in following Christ. And the Bible has said, sit down. Count the costs of following Jesus. Every morning when you wake up, child of God, take up your cross, carry it. There is no marriage and remarriage in the Bible. You know, no preach for years. No preach repentance and righteousness and holiness. And he was considered an idiot until it began to rain. Hey, hey, pastor, today you came to judge us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, the only scripture sinners know is judge not. And I can tell you in the Bible, the righteous judge and pass a righteous judgment. The Bible says in second, is it second Corinthians, first Corinthians 6, 2 to 3. Either we shall judge angels. How much more the small matters of the life? Yes, we do judge and pass a righteous judge. And secondly, if the Bible has judged you, you don't need man to judge you who? If the Bible has said in Galatians 5, 19, all drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. And your father has died and he is a drunkard. You will be lying to yourself to say he went to heaven. Don't judge. You know, maybe he went to heaven. How? Through which way? Through which way? When the Bible has judged you, you don't need a man to judge you. The Bible has said other trust and fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. He that is righteous judges all things, and that is the Bible. So any preacher, despite the miracles that you are doing, if you are in your second marriage, and your first legal husband or wife is alive, you are a candidate of hellfire, and let's repent us and the restitution. You don't just repent. That is not your wife. Take her back. That is not your husband. Leave that home. Until you repent, you will be a candidate of hellfire. Hallelujah. John 7, 2, uh, John chapter 7, verse 2, the B of it says, but judge righteously with a righteous judgment. Hallelujah. Now we are going to look at vile affections and we shall see them in the marriage bed. Maybe also single people do them. You are privileged if you got, uh, you got born again when you are still young. You are privileged because you didn't have to kiss some frogs before you got to where you were going. Some of us had to kiss two, three frogs or, or five or ten. So we are going to look at the marriage bed and with that, that's where we are going to draw the issue of vile affections as we go on. If should we not finish the topic today, we shall handle the bones next time or next Sunday, God willing. So the topic, subtopic will be vile affections. Vile affections. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. If you have been with me last Sunday, I told you, my premarital sex is actually forgery. It is a scam. It is illicit. 
Brother Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. We want to see things that happen, and sometimes we think because you go to a seminar, you say we had a daughter of Zion or daughter of Noah or daughter of Abraham, whatever daughter, and you are taught things that are not biblical, then you carry them to your marriage bed. You will defile your own soul, and not a not defiled soul will see the kingdom of God. Therefore, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed and defiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage should be honorable. Marriage should be honored by all people. If you are a witch, you should honor people's marriage. If you are a prostitute, you should honor people's marriage. Marriage is honorable. Na ndoa yeshimiwe. Na wachawi waheshimu ndoa. Na waganga waheshimu ndoa. Na makaaba waheshimu ndoa. It is an honorable thing. But these beds should be kept holy should be kept undefiled. There are many things, not just adultery and fornication. There are many things that defile a marriage bed. And you know, sex is a God's gift in marriage. Whatever God creates, you must always know, Satan will also pervert. Satan will also pervert. God will give you good things, but the devil will also pervert. What is a file affection? File affection is a disgraceful fashion, a passion. Disgraceful passion. Sexual perversion and natural affections. What are file affections? And you're going to forgive me. Where I come from, we cannot pronounce F and V. So if I say file affections, you must know I am saying V, the V for violet. Vile affections. Hallelujah. Disgraceful acts. Sexual perversion. Unnatural affection. So let us go to the word of God because the Bible mentions some of the uh, vile affections in Jesus' mighty name. We are going to read the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. Welcome so much, uh, servant of God, Richard Oware. I can see you online. The Lord bless you so very much. Romans, chapter 1, we are going to look at vile affections. The book of Romans, chapter 1, hallelujah. Some of these things you think are romantic. They are just vile affections. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 1. Uh, and today just like uh, last Sunday, but one, I think I'm also blowing it a bit hot. And today I may blow it hotter. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 26. And I am going to read, uh, 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 let's read from verse 24. Romans chapter uh, 1, allow me to read from verse 24 and I will stop somewhere. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the last of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and the worshipped and the served creature uh, rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Because of that, the Bible says, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burnt in lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. That is called the eternal doom. The lake of fire. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to look at this vile, uh, 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 what I'm going to call them, vile passions or affections that have been mentioned there in Jesus' mighty name. And you know, uh, some, the, the, the Western world has baptized this, some of these affections to beautiful names like alternative lifestyles. Vile affections are an abomination before God. All Christians are boundaries. We are people of boundaries. Even on the marriage bed, we are people of boundaries. One preacher told me, Wakitanda Yandoa Akuna. I think we were many in that group. Uko Akuna captain. Uko Nikila Mutu Pekeake. Ataka Mapenzi Kuna captain. Kama Umeokoka. We are boundaries as children of God. Now, there are things that are called vile uh, affections, and I'm going to be mentioning them. In Jesus' mighty name. Some of them you know them very easily. Like number one, 
homosexuality is a vile affection. If a man lie with another man, Leviticus 18, you can read it 22 to 30. If a man lie with another man as a man should lie with a woman, he has become an abomination before the Lord. Homosexuality, and I will show you that uh, the, the flesh of men is different from the flesh of blood, uh, of birth, and is different from the flesh of animals. It's in the Bible, and we shall be going to those uh, 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 scriptures once we finish this. Number two, I'm saying number one. Vile passions and affections, let me use affection so that I'll be able to pronounce it well. Vile affections, number one is homosexuality. Number two are no sex. God created man in his own image. Respect the image of God. Anas is an exit point, is not an entry point. It is just a vile affection. Oh, my husband likes it that way. You, you are called to submit to your husband in the way of God. Like if your husband today tells you go and do prostitution, you cannot go to do prostitution because you are submissive. Now you cannot have anal sex just to satisfy somebody. It is vile affection. And what will be a man doing there? That's an exit. Why would you be stirring feces? It's a shameful act. Number three, bestiality. Sexual act with, a, with an animal. A human between sex, sex between a human being and an animal. Today in the Western world, you can marry a dog, you can marry a horse, you can marry whatever you want to, to marry. There's a movie and you need to be very careful with what you, you watch and allow your children to watch. There's a, a movie called, uh, in the Disney, it is, uh, it is called uh, Disney Beauty. Another word called The Beast and the Planet of Apes. You see, they display that a human being married to a neighbor, a human being. They are corrupting the soul of your child. So that your child will grow up knowing it is okay to marry an animal. And now that children are not going to school, you are an absentee parent. You don't know what your children are. You don't know what your children are watching. There is another doll that is very highly demonic. It is called the baby, uh, the baby doll. You need to know some of these things. Satan is very subtle. He is introducing your children to bestiality, to homosexuality, to lesbianism. And you do not know because you don't know what your children are watching. Check that thing, Disney Beauty, Disney Beauty, the beast and the planet of herbs. That's what they propagate. You will sit down with your children, you will be watching, watching them. How much Christianity is the, is the Disney Beauty adding to your life? Check what your children are watching. Otherwise, if we will not allow God to bring up our children. Our children will be brought up by demons. I don't know which number we are in. The other one is lesbianism, like just like the homosexuality. And I want to tell you, bestiality is an abomination before God. Some of you, you are Christian. You can't sit well. Because when you sit, you have some vile affections. When it is the mating season for dogs. You will be out watching dogs mating. After you watch the dogs mating, what goes in through your mind? And tomorrow you will hear, Father, cleanse me. You are silly. You are not adding into your Christianity. You are opening doors. And the Bible says, when the age is broken, the serpent will bite. No wonder when you sleep today, you are saying, uh, men are sleeping with you. You start calling them spiritual husband and wife. Where did you get spiritual husband or wife? You need to be careful with your soul. I want to prove to you that human flesh, God created man specifically after his own image. Human flesh is different from animal flesh. The book of 1 Corinthians 15. Come with me in Jesus' mighty name. Because if some of these things, we will not check them. They are coming very fast to Africa. And uh, you see people marrying dogs and the preaching. You'll be saying, my papa. Don't touch my papa. It is a soul tie that you have with your papa. The Okatic Brotherhood in Kenya is bigger than the one in South Africa, I told you. And one of these fine days, God is going to raise men. They will touch your papa properly. Because your papa didn't die for you. First Corinthians chapter 15. We want to see the, uh, the flesh of uh, 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 birds and the flesh of, uh, uh, of human being. That it is different. That women were created for men and men were created for women. Not for dogs, not for cows and not for horses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that I'm going to read verse 38 and 39. Listen to me, child of God, 38 and 39. Uh -huh. But, uh, let me uh, just read uh, but, uh, 38. But God gives it a body, uh, let me read from 35 so that we understand. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? 
And with which, what body do they come? Foolish one. What you saw is not made alive until it dies. And what you saw, you do not saw that body uh, that shall be, but a mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body and he please, uh, as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same. That is verse 39. All flesh is not the same. But there is uh, one kind of flesh of men, number one. Another flesh for animals, number two. Another flesh for fish, number four. Another flesh for birds. God did not create birds after his own image. There is one flesh for men. There is another flesh for animals. Another flesh for fish. And another flesh for birds. Hallelujah. God create man after his own image. When you read Acts uh, chapter 17 verse 25, we see God said he created all races from one blood. And there is no race that is superior or inferior to another. But when it came to the flesh, the body, the body is different. The body of a human being is different from the body of an animal. So God did not, it was not the plan of God that a man should marry a dog. We are talking about vile affections, even up, happening inside marriage. Hallelujah. And I don't know what number we were in. Uh, we are still on that uh, bestiality. We want to go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, 20, where we were last time. Genesis chapter 2, and we are going to verse 20. Genesis chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 20. And today I am reading all scripture from the New King James Version. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the hair, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, but for Adam, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So a bird and an animal, a dog, a horse could not be an helper to Adam. And what did God do? He made a helper for Adam. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on man. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which God, uh, uh, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. So men were made for women, uh, uh, for women and women for men. That is how a marriage should be. And if you find yourself that you have fine affections even inside your marriage. You need repentance and you need to go back to the cross. You have not yet counted the cost of following Jesus. I don't know what fine affection we are in. Adultery and fornication in the marriage bed. You know, I told you if a man is married and is sleeping with a single woman, the single lady is in fornication and the man is in adultery. Those ones God has said he shall judge for the marriage bed should be kept holy and pure. Somebody should uh, show me what we are, uh, at what number we are in. We are still at bestiality. We are going to Genesis 1 and we are going to read 25. Uh, uh, we are going to Genesis 1. We are going to read verse 25 and we are going to see whether a man can marry a dog or a man can be married to a, to a horse. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we are going to read Genesis 1 and I'm going to read slowly verse 25. God made the beast of the earth according to its kind. Cattle according to its kind. Everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And the God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. According to our likeness. Let us make men in our own image according to our likeness. Hallelujah. And men is supposed to have dominion over those things, not for them, but for him to be marrying them. A cow after a cow. Cows will mate with cows. Goats mate with goats. Frogs mate with everything mate after its own kind. Respect the image of God in your life. Respect the image of your God. Some of you sleep with God. Yes, we have seen it in the media. As some people sleep with gods. You are an abomination before God. You must, be, you must repent in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know what number we are in. The Bible calls bestiality strange flesh. Jude 1, 7. The book of Jude is just before Revelation. The book of Jude is just one chapter, so we just say Jude 7. So if I say Jude 7, I'm reading Jude chapter 1, verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities around them, 
in a similar manner to this, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and the gone after strange flesh. The flesh of animals is a strange flesh. God did not create a human being the way he created animals. When God wants to create you and me, he spoke to himself. He said, let us, God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, let us make men after our own image and in our own likeness. And I set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You know, hell fire and the lake of fire will burn with brimstone. Brimstone, just like a Sodom and Gomorrah burnt with brimstone. Don't go after strange flesh. It is a vile affection. Vile affection. The book, we are going now to look at another. I have lost count. I know we started with uh, homosexuality. Uh, we came to anal sex. We went to lesbianism. Be a, a bestiality. I don't know which number is that. Now we are going to incest. Vile affection. You are brother feud with the Holy Ghost. And you have an erection for your biological sister. You need to deliver to fear. You need to deliver us. Incest. And we are going to look at the book of Deuteronomy. You are lasting after your cousin. We are going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 27. We are looking at vile affections. Deuteronomy, allow me to get there. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 27, and we are going to read verse 21 to 22. Deuteronomy chapter 27, I am going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Now Moses with the elders, Deuteronomy 27 verse 21 to 22. Deuteronomy 27 verse 21 to 22. Cast is the one who lies with any kind of an animal, any kind whether dog, whatever, any kind of an animal. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cast is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Incest is a vile affection. Or oh, number five, incest. Vile affection. Vile affection. Things that are not godly. Things that the world is teaching you, you are bringing them to ladies' meeting. Aha. Uh -huh. We are going again. Oral sex. Hello? Oral sex. A mouth can be used for kissing or whatever you want to do with it on the breast. For so the Bible says if this is your wife, our breast should satisfy you. But a mouth is not a sexual organ. It's not somewhere you put your penis in. A mouth is not a sexual organ. It is perversion. Oral sex is perversion. Even when it is being done in, the legal, in, the, in a legal marriage, it is a perversion. That, God did not teach you that. What taught you that you are a sensual being? So what taught you that is pornography? Oral sex. Oral sex is pollution. You know, Satan is the father of all manner of pollution. Satan is doing everything to capture your soul to hell. Nobody told you that. Today when you go to ladies' meeting, they tell you, if you do not do that, your husband will go. He are the husband that you collected for yourself. But if it is an husband that God gave you, he cannot leave you because of such nonsense. Why? The Lord will make sure he stays within the boundary. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oral sex. Mouth can be used for kissing or whatever you want to do. But it's not an entry point. It's not a sexual organ. We are number seven now. We are in number uh, number seven. You know, the Bible says, let me show you um, about uh, breasts. That's I mean, the pastor is talking about breasts. I carry breasts, so I talk about breasts. There is nothing wrong with the, uh, me talking about breasts. I am a mother, so I see breasts. I also suck my mother's breasts. Proverbs 5. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 5. And I am going to read uh, uh, Proverbs 5. I am going to read verse 17 to 20. Aha, uh -huh, verse 17 to 20. No, 15. Let me start from verse 15. Drink water from your own system. And the running water from your own well. The well that you have bought, you have paid for. Not the one that you have gone and stolen. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad? Should your spam be dispersed abroad? Strips of water in the streets. Some of you, you don't, you don't know the connection between destiny and spam. You, 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 you saw spam everywhere. When you are walking in Kenyatta Avenue, you see a prostitute, you saw spam. You see a school guard, you saw spam. You do not know the connection of destiny and your spam. Should your streams be in the streets? Let them only be your own and the not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. 
as a loving dear and a graceful dog, let our breath satisfy you at all times, not during bedtime alone, at all times, and always be enraptured with our love. And the breast is breast, whether it's yellow, whether it is stunting, whether it is swollen, whether it looks like socks. The Bible has said, let the breast of your wife satisfy you. So your wife, you married her, she had straight breasts. Now it's 20 years, the, the breast is a fallen soldier. Now you are running after school girls and in church you are preaching. You are saying, Rabashanda, child of Satan, vile affections, vile affections. We are in number what now? Somebody should remind me what number we are in. File affections. We talked about other tree fornication. File affection, pornography. We are in number eight. I don't know. Um, point number six was oral sex. I don't know number. Uh, the number seven should be uh, whatever number you have. Pornography. You know, pornography. Sometimes it's not you. You are asking people for their nude, uh, nudes. That's what man of God. The praise and worship a leader you see her in church after church you ask her for news. For what? You want to watch nakedness. The people that are leading praise and worship in your church, their dresses are half die. Men are there having an illicit erection. You are saying you are praising God. You are a daughter of Jezebel. Pornography. You watch dirty things in magazines. You buy the CD, you watch pornography. Now, if God has given you a marriage and he has blessed it with sex, why should you? Why should God pay school fees? Why should God give you classroom and you go and look for a, tu a Satan as a tutor? Satan cannot teach you anything good. Phonography, and you see the problem of phonography, it gives you a bondage. You know, before I knew Christ, I used to watch those things. So I know what I am talking about. It gives you a bondage in a way, even when you are properly married. Yes, I did drop from planet. I, I was... Before I knew the Lord, I watched those things. Before I knew the Lord, I had sinful relationship. I think two of them. Sinful relationships. So I know what I am talking about. You know, it keeps you in a bondage. In a way, before you can watch that uh, pornography, even if you are with your wife, you cannot get stimulated. There is no affection. The affection is coming from pornography. Because as you watch pornography, there is a transfer of demons in your life. Satan will transfer a demon in your life. It is a sexual demon. It's the one that will teach you all manner of perversion. And that's why you find people are married. You leave your wife on bed. You run to the bathroom to masturbate. You are bound. It is a bondage. And you know, bondage is actually not what binds you. Bondage is what you have refused to let go so that you will be free. You know, sometimes you see Christians struggling with sin. They are going from church to church for deliverance. Sit down. You don't need any deliverance. Sit down with the word of God. See, the word of God is the best deliverer. It will sanctify you. It will kick demons out of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. My time. Today we will not be able even to look at, the, at, uh, at uh, those bonds because our uh, I see my time is far much gone. But let's see how we go. Pornography is designed by Satan. It is designed by Satan to capture your soul to hellfire. The people acting pornography are demons in human flesh. And you will be saying, ah, it is okay, I watch it with my wife. Satan is coaching you how to enjoy God's gift. It is a bondage. Those of you who are young and you are indulging in such things, they will laugh. They will love much, it will be catastrophic, it will have such demonic effects in your life. You need re repentance and you need to be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. You see, if you want to stay in bondage, it is because you have chosen to stay in bondage. You know, Jesus Christ came and died for us as sinners that he may set us free. So it's like you are in a prison. The judge has said... The bail is one million. Cash bail is one million. Jesus has come and he has paid the one million. But you tell him, you know what? Despite the fact that you have paid the cash bail, I just want to stay in prison. That's what you are doing to yourself when you say no to Jesus. When you say no to our deliverer. When you say no to the redeemer. You are saying no to the person who should be helping you in life. I don't know what number we are. There are other people like, they don't watch pornography, but they like watching animals mating. Young brother. Why are you watching a dog mate? Tell me any erection that will give you pure thoughts. None. Those are things that cannot help you. Cannot help you. The use of sex toys. The use of sex toys. The use of sex toys. God didn't give you a wife to insert plastic things in her. Huh? No. What you want to insert plastic, you have it. And God has blessed you in that way. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm waiting for a bigger man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come out of perversion. Vile affections. Vile affections. You know, Satan will do everything to take you to L5. That is why you sit down. There is a program we used to watch. You see a Christian sitting down to watch soap opera. And then they go like they are watching soap opera. You don't know God. There is a program we used to watch. In a, if you don't know the bold and the beautiful, you are, you are born 90s or 2000. Some of us were born before. And then you will realize this program will teach you how to date several men. Yes, you can date a son. And when you are through with him, you can date the father. How is that program helping you to go to heaven? How is Maria helping you to go to heaven? Things that you see people you will be watching with your children. Uh, people are kissing on the screen. You say, ah, see, she is kissing today. Your daughter is 12, is there. When you hear that she kissed a man, you come here and say, school should open, school should open. Who has been the tutor of your children? The TV. The TV. So if we will not teach our children Jesus, Satan will teach them perversion. Hallelujah. And I can tell you the world will only get more perverted. Please hate what is evil. The psalmist said in Psalm 97, 10 to 11, let us go there. David said in Psalm 97, verse 10 to 11. Psalm 97, verse 10 to 11. Uh, uh, 10 to 11. He said like this. Uh, I'm reading uh, Psalm 97. Allow me to get there. The book of Psalm. Chapter 97, we are still on the vile affections, that is what we are completing now, the vile affections in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that this message will enlighten you, you will make your uh, bed honorable, your marriage bed will be pure, and if you are you and you have been entangling yourself with these things, they must stop, they must stop, hallelujah. I hear a question in the spirit, I'm going to answer it, it's a deep question, what is, you know masturbation? It's when you pressure, like you, 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 you touch yourself, that kind of a thing. But if it's a marriage and it's a couple touching themselves, that, that's okay. That's their own business. It's not, that's worship. That is, that, that, that is blessed by God. You know, that thing in marriage is blessed by God. Hallelujah. So now, um, Psalm 97, 10 to 11. Psalm 97, 10 to 11. You who love the Lord, hallelujah. You who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints and he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. You who love the Lord, hate evil. Run away from vile affections in Jesus' mighty name. Run away from vile affections in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 81.12, the Bible says in Psalm 81.12, I'm still in vile affections. 81.12, this is what the Bible says. So I gave them over to their own stubborn earths. To walk in their councils. Let me read 11 and 12. But my people would not eat my voice. And Israel would have none of it. So I gave them over to their own stubborn art. To walk in their own council. And there are churches in Kenya. That teach you. When you have ladies meeting. They teach you how you can do oral sex. You can do. You are being prepared for hellfire. That person is not teaching you file affections. He's teaching you file affections. Hallelujah. God, when you fail to hear his voice, he hands you over to your stubborn heart so that you walk in your own counsel. You advise yourself how to want to do. Anything that is against nature is against God. That is why we don't carry anything that is like, that's why we don't even carry a tissue thing. Anything that is against the creation is also against God. Hallelujah. The world will get more perverted, I have told you. Let us now look at 2 Timothy 3. 1 to 5. The book of 2 Timothy, I'm using the new, uh, new King James Version. The book of 2 Timothy, we are going to read uh, chapter 3, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. These are the days. We are the generation that will witness the rapture of the church. We are that generation. These are the times that the Bible, these are the times that Paul was talking about. But know that this, in the last days, perilous times will come. For man will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. You boast a lot, that's why you keep on posting pictures on Instagram. Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous. Without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traders, headstrong, 
haute, lovers of pleasure than the, the, rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, the Bible has said, turn away, no apologies. From such people, turn away. Now let us look at the book of Romans, how we should present our bodies before the Lord. The book of Romans, I know you know that, chapter 12 and verse uh, uh, 1 to 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1 to 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12. Come out of vile affections. They corrupt the soul. They, divide, they defile the soul. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you may present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So the body must be presented before God, holy. What is a living sacrifice? It's like a sheep. So that body, if you want a sacrifice, because the sacrifice must be dead, you must take a knife, which is the word of God, the sword, and they kill the body so that it will become a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. God will not accept that which is an abominable. So those of you who are in homosexuality, lesbianism, come out of it. Bestiality, stop sleeping with dogs and gods. Stop it. That's strange flesh. Come out of it. Use of sex toys, oral sex, pornography, incest. Come out of it. And some of these things you need to repent and do restitution. You need to repent and do restitution. Especially if you've been involved in, in rape and something like that. You need restitution in Jesus' mighty name. And therefore, I will end the issue of vile affections there because I want to talk about now the spiritual bonds that are very invisible. And this one will be beneficial to the youth tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I see we still have some 30 minutes that we can continue in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody please give me a glass of water. Hallelujah. Now we want to say this to the youth. You are unmarried now. You have the time to seek God. You cannot seek God. You are seeking marriage. We don't seek marriage. Oh. God gives us marriage. We seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And those small, small things like marriage, car house, small thing, investment, small thing, God will add them unto you. Jacob used a stone as a pillow, and he saw heaven. He saw the vision of heaven, because hearing God requires some diligence. Samson decided to use Delilah's, Delilah's dice as a pillow, and he lost destiny. He lost his vision, and therefore if you are a youth, it is very good for you. I hope I am audible. I hope I, you can hear me. It is, if you are a youth, it is good for you to see where you are sleeping in. Which spiritual pillow are you using? Because if you are sleeping on the dice of Delilah, there are going to be trouble in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to say, uh, am I audible? If I am audible, I want to know. So that as I continue, as I wait for water, my throat is a bit dry. Help me to know whether I am audible in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Am I audible? Hearing God requires diligence. Yes, Sister Jen or Home. It requires diligence. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. uh, I am. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the youth, you know me, I don't spare you a lot. But I want to talk to you now. You know, even if you are using a condom in sex, Condoms can only prevent pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases like HIV, gonorrhea, uh, syphilis, whatever it is. But they will never prevent sexually transmitted demons and the bondages from entering your life. They say today I'm good. I'm good. I thank God I'm not a single mother because your abortions have been successful. Listen. Condoms prevent sexually transmitted diseases. They don't prevent sexually transmitted demons. And you know, you, you, you know, there are strange things that make you behave like a, a, a gazelle. The, you know, you are a child of God. You are supposed, yes, Margaret Mutu, you need to be saying amen. You are supposed to be a somebody of self-control. And today I will focus a bit much on the men. Now, why? let us look at the book of 2 Timothy. Let us look at the sec a book of 2 Timothy. You know, if the man you are sleeping with is in Ocatic, that will not prevent him from sacrificing you because you used a condom. Condom is your own business. In the spiritual realm, the demons are entering. They enter and go to your uterus, go to your heart. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 
Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible says Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. That means if you are pursuing worldly lusts and the youthful lusts, you cannot call on the Lord from a pure heart. Your soul will be corrupt. The only thing you begin to think, you are 22. You are thinking of a woman to marry. You are perverse. You have not even finished college. The money that you have is the one that your father gives you. Even the money to buy inner where you are getting from your father. And you are looking for a woman. A perverse generation. Flee. The Bible has not said run away. It has said flee from youthful lusts. And they join the people who call upon the Lord from the pure heart. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We are coming to the bones. Before then, I always like to lay foundation. So let us go to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. The book of First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4. And I am going to read verse 3. Verse 3. For this is the will of God. This is not the will of man. The will of God. You are sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality. You should abstain from sexual immorality. That, listen, Niskiza Vizuri, Mandiko Inasema, that each of you should know how to possess his vessel. You know, Paul used to use good language. I want to tell you, you must know how to possess your private part. Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. That thing must be possessed in sanctification and in honor. That no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter. Because he, the Lord, is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. Every man must possess his own vessel. The Bible says so. It calls it his vessel. I've told you the vessel is, the, is your private part. Whatever you carry in between your legs. The Bible has said, possess it with honor and the sanctification. Possess your vessel with honor and the sanctification. Don't take those things where God does not go. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5.3. The book of Ephesians 5.3. And if you say nobody can be holy... There are many people who have lived in this world uh, holy and went to heaven. Apostle Paul said, you know how holily we lived among you. Continue following people who tell you nobody can be holy, nobody can be uh, perfect. The book of Ephesians uh, chapter, God is calling all his children into perfection according to Matthew 5, is it 28? So we are going to the book of Ephesians. Allow me to get there. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. And I am going to read verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness. He uncleanness in a same apostle ile ya kuoga. Uncleanliness is what I have told about you. Vile affection or covetousness. Let it not even be named among you. Wacha tusisikia unatumia luka ya ujinga, luka ya watu ambao wajaokoka iti wanakula kwa macho, wanaslay, wakiomba. Iyo ni luka ya watu ambao wajaokoka. Whether they have church or not. Let it not even be named among you. As is fitting for saints. And you know, let me tell you something. You know, the things that I'm going to teach you about bondages and, uh, and bonds, I did not know them. Nobody taught me about spiritual bonds. You know, when I came to the Lord, that time I was a bit young, I was a bit frustrated. And uh, I told you, because me, my life is an open book. I, I don't really mind. I was in a relationship, a sinful relationship. And that relationship came to an end. And then after some time of stress, I decided, ah, now I've, I've gone to drink beer, it's not helping me. I, I've, I've, I've gone to diviners, they are not helping me. Let me try Jesus. So I just got born again. And I became very serious with the Lord. And one of the, uh, just uh, as I got born again, I never used to go to church because I wanted the Lord to direct me to which church to go to. And then there's a, a, a dream. I grew up dreaming. So there's a dream that God gave me. And this dream... Uh, 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 allowed me to know maybe the Lord is calling me to ministry. So marriage became a sensitive issue in my life. And I decided I would be praying about it daily. And it was in the midst of those prayers 
when the Lord started to tell me, break this, break this, break this, you know, you were praying for a husband. The Lord began to teach me the formula that he uses to give people husbands. Then he told me, break this, break this until you are free. And until you stand single in the spiritual realm, then I will bless you. And then night after night, night after night, I began to break some things. And it, at there's a point that I reached and I knew I was free. Because that time the Lord showed me the man that will marry me, though I had never met him, I had never known him. The Lord showed me his hometown county, where he comes from. The Lord showed me the nature of his work. And the Lord also showed me his spiritual condition in a vision. I had never met that man. He is my husband. Now, I had never met him. I had never known somebody from that region. Why? Because I knew I had become free. So what I teach you, no man set me down to teach me about these bonds. No. The Lord himself taught me about these bonds. Hallelujah. I don't know whether we are finished. Let it not be named among you. As is fitting for the saints, neither filthiness or foolish talking. You know, foolish talking and the coarse joking. They are not fitting for the children of God. Coarse jokes. Jokes that cause you to feel uh, sexy. They, they, they are coarse jokes. Eh? You see people bring them in Facebook, you will be laughing. Oh, jamaa kona chuma ya dos. Chuma ya dos ndiyo kitu gani? You are a child of God. You don't, you don't join the world to, to do coarse jokes. They are not befitting for the children of God. Hallelujah. They are not befitting. They are not befitting. And therefore, we are going again to Proverbs 7, 22 to 23. We were there when we talked about the attire of an alot, Mavazi Yakahaba. And we say the woman described in Proverbs 7 was not an alot, only that she wore the attire of an alot. And by then, she, by that, by just wearing the attire of an alot, she was identified as an alot. Therefore, Proverbs chapter 7, hallelujah. I hope we are Turiamwe. I hope we are still together. Turiamwe. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Aha. You know, you can, the craftiness of an alot, you can go and read it, uh, uh, the whole of it. I will only read uh, maybe 22 and uh, 20, maybe 21 to 23. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield with her flattering lips and seduced him. Immediately he went after her, as a ox goes to the slaughter, or as a fool for the correction of the stocks, till an arrow struck his liver, as a bird ascends to the snare. He did not know it would cost his life. Some of these things you are doing, you think it's pleasure. You, you think you have muscle, you are a man, that's why you sleep with five different girls in a day. It will cost your life. The Bible has said so. Ata ujashanuka, ni upumbavu tu. And you must understand the language of the Bible. Ikisema una ikeme semi ya una ubongo. Mandiko inasema alalaya na kaaba hana akili. Kuna tofauti ya akili na ubongo. You are the membrane but you are full. If you think like sleeping with women will earn you a trophy or men. It will not earn you any trophy. The Bible has said at the end of it it will cost your life. I want to address the brothers right now in Jesus' mighty name. So even your church, they tell you women cannot preach. You can as well leave the broadcast because I am a preacher and right now I want to address men in Jesus' mighty name. I was called to preach the gospel of Christ. I was not called to preach to women. Hear me. There is something that really sometimes makes men behave very strangely. And then before we talk about these bonds, I want to address it. I'm going to address it the way it is in Jesus' mighty name. You know, having an erection is a normal body function. Yeah, that you can get maybe in the morning. Early in the, it's normal. It's God that put. It's just like a, an emotion of anger. God put it in your life there, but you should not misuse it. For instance, if you get angry, you should not sin in the angry uh, in your anger, and you should, the anger has a time limit, which is twelve hours. This an erection is something that God has really put in your body. The problem is when you begin to obey its dictates. And obeying the dictates of an erection is a choice and I should see all the men. Deacon Anthony, I'm seeing you online. You should be saying amen. Hallelujah. If you begin to obey the dictates of an erection, that is when now erection becomes direction for you. And that is the problem we have. And I want to say this, I want to say it loud and clear. Unsolicited erection is not a respecter of persons. You need to possess your own vessel with sanctification and honor. And I don't know any erection that gives you pure thoughts except the one that you get 
with your spouse, if you are with your spouse or you think about your spouse when you are in the office and you get it, that is okay. That is the legal one. But I don't know another one outside the confines of marriage that can give you pure thoughts. Self-control and discipline is among the fruit of the Holy Ghost according to Galatians 5, 22 to 23. You know, our desires should not lead our decisions. The Bible says, I think, in Romans 6, if you read the whole chapter, we are no longer slaves of sin, but we are slaves unto righteousness. And as you go to verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. So we are going to handle this. I'm going to stay here because I want to show you disastrous erections and what they did in the Bible. Now that you say, today I woke up with an erection facing South Sea. I'm heading to South Sea. You are not a child of God. It is the body that is controlling you. It's no longer the Holy Spirit. And you know the stupidity, <laughs> the stupidity of an erection is that sometimes it's not selective. And I want to tell you, unchecked erections had led great kings to bed with their slaves and their maids. Great kings, unchecked erection, has led them to bed with their maids and with their slaves. And the clergy has not been left out of this drama. Many are messing up, even in this nation, messing up with those that they are supposed to shepherd. And dear sisters, you know, you, you are foolish. Your papa is in a, an immoral man, you know. You can even tell that he is immoral by how he talks to you. And then you say, my papa is very fond of me. Uh -huh. Your papa's private part is canon. Uh -huh. You heard me clearly, sisters. What will he be doing with papa in, the, uh, in his office alone? What are you doing with papa? My papa is very fond on me. You are foolish. He's fond of you. Where he wants to sleep with you. And then you, uh, there's some unmarried women. You don't have some married women. You don't have the wisdom of God. A man of God is sitting in the office alone. He say, Papa, I pay to see you one on one. Say, Papa, say, what is it? My husband has not slept with me for six days. If, you, if that man is a jackal, he will answer that prayer. I am telling you. If that man is a sheep in a wolf's skin, is a, a wolf in sheep's skin, he will answer that prayer. So you need to set your own boundaries. Because this, this kind of thing is destroying church. Pastors are sleeping with the people in praise and worship, the people that are supposed to shepherd them. And some of you, when a man of God sleeps with you, you begin to feel good because you think, you think that uh, anointing is sexually transmitted. No, your papa is in Okatic. He is looking for somebody to sacrifice. Hallelujah. Don't fall for such a thing. You know, if you find somebody who does not fear God, he likes around, if he's a man, he likes around himself with women. And when you want to see him, he makes sure there is nobody else there. And then you go out telling other girls, hey, pastor, ask favor with me. Hey, you see, pastor, no, it is your vessel that he is looking for. Be careful. Be careful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. Why are you telling your, your pastor is not married? You are telling him your husband has not slept with you. Have you lacked any other counsel? Where is your place of prayer? Where are your best couples? Where are people who can advise you? And now you are looking for a young man. And some of you will sit a young man, a man in 27 years. You'll be telling him the troubles you are having in marriage. He'll start having pity for you. He will console you with his vessel if you are not careful. Hallelujah. Because of this thing, I am talking about this animal called direction. Today, many are in prison because of rape. Many are in prison because of uh, sex with minors, because of uncontrolled erection. And we're going to be looking at the Bible. There was a man called Shechem. We are going to look at him in Genesis 34. He saw Dina, the daughter of Jacob. She was good. He could not man his own vessel. He raped Dina. And in turn, the sons Levi and Simeon killed all the men in that Shechem because of Dina. The book of Genesis chapter 34 verse 21. I hope I am still audible. The book of Genesis chapter 24 and the verse 31. The book of Genesis chapter 24 and verse 31. And this is what it says. The book of Genesis chapter 34. The book of Genesis chapter 34, and I am going to read uh, verse uh, 21. The book of Genesis, you can read the whole of it if you want to know uh, the whole story. I'm reading from uh, verse 21. Uh, I really don't want to read 21. Let me uh, read uh, one. Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had bought to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. 
And when Shechem, the son of Amma, the Evite, the prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her and defiled her and raped her. That should be the right translation. Let me see what King James says. Uh, King James says uh, Genesis 34. Allow me to look at it in King James Version. Uh, Genesis chapter 34. I want to read uh, uh, verse 1. You know, my time is really going, but I still have some minutes. We're going to handle this animal called direction. So that when you wake up in the morning, you control yours. And Tina, the daughter of Leah, which she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the uh, son of Amma, the Evite, the prince, the prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Erection and control erection has led, you know, has led men into prison, having sex with minors. Many today have become absentee fathers. You are not ready to become a father, but you didn't know how to control your own erection. Absentee fathers. Great opportunities have been lost in life. Let us look at the case of Reuben, and I really want to talk about Reuben today in Jesus' mighty name. I know we are not going to finish today, but we, when the time comes, we'll just stop. Reuben, let us go to Genesis chapter 49. You see what, how much Reuben lost because of, uh, how, how many minutes does sex take? I really don't know. Uh, if I mention minutes, you will say that is how much it takes between me and my husband. So I will be careful with that one. But few minutes of pleasure made Reuben, made Reuben lose a lot, lose a lot, made Reuben lose destiny. And the Bible says, and the Jacob, I'm reading Genesis 49. And the Jacob called his sons and they said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob and listen. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my mighty and beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as waters that we shall not examine. Because you went up to your father's bed, and you defiled it. Yes, he went up to my court. Listen. Reuben slept with Bilia, and they lost the prophetic mantle. You know, Reuben lost the prophetic mantle as the firstborn. He was the one to carry the prophetic anointing, to produce kings in the nation of Israel. He lost it because of an illicit sex, uncontrolled erection. He lost it. He lost it. And I want to talk of Reuben a little bit because this curse followed him until the book of Numbers. This curse, and that's why I usually tell you, if there is a ground that your parent, have, you know they are parent that curse your, their children for no apparent reason. Maybe you are in another religion, you have now become Christian, your parent is cursing you. That is a curse without a cause. They are men just wake up curse you. But if you have done something that has caused your parent to curse you, as long as your parent is life, alive, that curse cannot be removed by a preacher. You need to go back and do restitution. But if your parent is dead, now the spirit, now as spiritual parents, we can remove that curse in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus has come now. He can re remove that curse in Jesus' mighty name. Now, because of the, that curse that was laid on, uh, uh, because of that curse that was laid on Reuben, other tribes became, became much bigger in size than Reuben. They became bigger than Reuben. Reuben, uh, until it got the attention of the men of God, Moses. Listen to me very carefully about what Jacob said. Unstable as waters, you shall not excel. This was as a result of illicit sex. And let us go to Deuteronomy 33, chapter 6. We see what Moses said about Reuben. Because I want to tell you, because of this, there were many consequences that followed after this pronouncement that unstable as waters, you shall not excel. I'm reading the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33. And I am going to read uh, verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. Why did Moses bless Reuben like that? We want to look at that kind of blessing. Let Reuben live and not die. Meaning from that point, Reuben began to die prematurely. Number one, Reuben began to die prematurely. Number two, no let his men be few. That means the population size of Reuben in Israel became limited. 
I have said number one, let Reuben live and not die signifies that Reuben began to have premature death because of sex. Number two, number two, the population size, the population size of Reubenites was small. This one caught the attention of the men of God. You need to understand in Genesis 49, when Jacob cast Reuben, Moses was not there. Moses was not there. But the kind of premature death, the kind of uh, the size of Reubenites caught the attention of the man of God. Reuben as the firstborn should have, should have had a larger portion than others. I am saying Reuben should have, should have had a larger portion than others. But if you are a good reader of the Bible, you will realize whenever from that day, whenever Israel went to war, many people who died were from the tribe of Reuben. Were from the tribe of Reuben. I am on the point, great opportunities have been lost in life because of unchecked erections. Hallelujah. Many people have gone into early grave, and we are going to study the story of Amnon. Amnon was the son of David, and Tamar was also the daughter of David. Many have gone to early grave. We have said, because of these unchecked erections, many today are in prison for either rape or sleeping with minors. Number two, they have become absentee fathers. They were not ready for parenthood. And you see, there is a structure of God on where children should be gotten in. Yes, yes, yes. The structure of God is that children should be born in a marriage. Absentee fathers. But don't worry. If you have gone outside the structure of God and you gave birth to children outside marriage, we are in the period of grace. You are acceptable before God. So great opportunities have been lost. And now we are seeing many are in the early grave. Recently, I read in the news that a bishop was found sleeping with a man's, uh, with another man's wife, and the man hacked him to death right there. Many people are in early grave because of failing to control an erection. And we are going to do a case study in the book of 2 Samuel 13. Please come with me. Second, the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I worship you. Holy Spirit, be my dear friend. Holy Spirit, give me the revelation of the word of God. Holy Spirit, I need you more than I need money. Holy Ghost, I need you more than I need this life. Because even after this life, I will need you to know how to worship the Lord. Aha, uh -huh. Second Samuel, and I'm going to read uh, chapter 13. I will just read just few. Verse 1. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick. For she was a virgin, and it was improper, improper for Amnon to do anything with her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, son of Shimea, David's brother, his cousin. Now Jonadab was a very crafty man, and he said to him, Why are you, king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not let me... Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jonadam said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be healed. Premeditated rap. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, You know the story, please let my sister come, give me food, that kind of a thing. And he ended up committing incest and raping the sister. The consequences, we are talking about early grave. Verse 29. Uh, let me read verse 28 to 29. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Watch now, when Amnon's heart is, is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon and then kill him, do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did, uh, uh, did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each one got his mule and fled. And that tells you, Absalom committed a premeditated murder as a revenge to the defilement that had happened to his sister. Sometimes you have bad friends, you just share with them something they will be giving crafty. You remember when we were talking about destiny opus, I told you you need to pray for God to give you godly friends. I want to bring the service to an end, but before then, 
This unchecked erection has led to incest, even in the times of the Bible. Genesis chapter 38, and that one you know. Genesis chapter 38, the story of Judah and Tamar. Maybe when we meet again, by God's grace now, we will be now be able to talk about the bonds, the spiritual bonds that you get. And now you will be able to know why a woman will be battered by a, 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 a boyfriend, quote and quote. Be battered, she will be taken to the ICU. As a family, as she comes from the ICU, you will find her again in that man's house. Spines, ties that bind. Mm -hmm. You know the story of uh, Tamar, Tamar and Judah. I may not be able to read it, but you know how incest happened. Uh, you know, Il was the firstborn of Judah. And uh, Il, e -E -R, married Tamar. But that Il was wicked before the Lord, so the Lord killed him. And the Judah said to our Onan, go into your brother's wife and marry her and raise up an heir for your child. But Anan knew, and he knew the law of Moses. That is what was supposed to happen. But because of that, the Bible says he used to emit on the ground. And I have seen some people without revelation. We get all in a preacher saying that be, uh, this is killing baby. You don't kill a baby that has not been form, formed. There wouldn't have been problem if, uh, if, if this one chose to do family planning through withdrawal, but give a hair to, to his brother, a e -R -R. But he knew, he was just wicked. He knew that he didn't want to do it. He didn't want the, bro the, names, the brother Hill's name to continue. God killed Onan not because he spilled sperm on the ground. God killed Onan because he failed to obey the law of Moses. And the law that he broke had, uh, had an attachment as a capital offense. He committed a capital offense. Now those of you who are going on telling people you cannot do a method of withdrawal. Oh, I'm still born again. You, you just don't know the word of God. You don't know. You need to sit down and be taught the word of God. There is nothing wrong if should you choose to use um, the method of withdrawal as family planning method. Yes, family, family plan. You are family. You cannot kill that which is not born. It takes 72 hours for, for a sperm to travel and meet an, an, an ovary. I don't, is it an ovum? Whatever we used to read in biology. Anything that happens between uh, the uh, one second and 72 hours, there is no creation there. So come out of indoctrination. Let the word of God dwell, you, dwell within you in all wisdom. That's what brought us. That's just a by the way. We will handle those topics as we go on. Now, uh, the, you know, when Reuben lost his prophetic mando to produce kings for Israel, that prophetic mando went to Judah. So I want to read, uh, uh, I, I want to read uh, Genesis 49 again to see the blessing that uh, Judah received and see how he messed it up with an erection. This thing you need to handle. It possess your own vessel with sanctification and honor. So uh, the book of uh, uh, Genesis 49, verse 8. Judah, you are whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on their neck of their enemies. Your father's children shall bow to you before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. As a lion, you shall, who shall arose him? Who shall arose him? Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The prophetic mandate to produce kings in Israel was given to Judah. No a lawgiver from between his legs. You know, Moses talks better than Apostle Paul. No a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. So the prophetic mandate to produce kings went to Judah. But Judah had also a problem of uncontrolled erection. So you know the story in Genesis 39, there was another, another son. And when now the son was growing, Tamar had already been sent to her family. And she was, according to the law of Moses, she was supposed to have been given, uh, uh, she was supposed to uh, have been given to that boy for the boy to, to marry her. But you know, they had told Tamar, remain a widow in your father's house until Shelah is grown. But Tamar would hear, Shelah is growing, Shelah is growing. And uh, he was not given Shelah. So she disguised one time, she must, because Tamar had lived in the house of Judah, she must have known Judah had a problem. Shame on you old men if you last after your daughter's in law. It is disgraceful. And today you have an erection for your son's wife. You are a disgrace to the kingdom of God. She must have known Judah had this kind of problem. So she heard that he was coming to share the sheep. So you know the story she disguised um, herself as a shrine prostitute. And the Judah went into her. 
and she became pregnant. And when Judah went and heard that, you see how people can be funny. Judah heard that Tamar was pregnant. Judah refused to give Sarah to Tamar. But when she heard that Tamar was uh, pregnant now, he became full now. He wanted the law to take effect. Tamar was a wise woman. She had carried some proof, evidence, physical evidence, to show that it was Judah that was responsible for her, so for her pregnancy. And that is how Perez, you know, that, that is how Perez was born. And uh, that is how Zera was born. But the effect was uh, felt. The effect was big. I want to finish. Because from that day, there was no king from the line of Judah. I will show you in the next broadcast. From that day, there was no king in Israel from Judah until King David. Because of an erection, incest, great opportunities were lost. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are just well. Until an erection showed you how to go to the brothel until you carry HIV. You are just well. You are a good, you, you are a good man. An erection showed you how to rape a minor. Today you are in prison. You need repentance in Jesus' mighty name. You need repentance in Jesus' mighty name. A strong man is not measured by the level of physical muscles and how much nations he has conquered. No. It is measured by how much you are able to possess your, possess your vessel in honor and sanctification. No man in history could be said to be more powerful than Samson. Yet his erection made him the weakest man in history. He didn't know how to possess his vessel in honor and sanctification. David killed Goliath. We will begin from there next Sunday by Jesus' name. David killed Goliath and conquered many great nations. But he could not conquer his erection for Bathsheba. He could not conquer it. Only repentance saved him. Yeah. We are talking about vile affections. That's what we began in. I have now laid foundations for strong now to show you about salt eye strong bonds. So that you know why you keep on thinking about a boyfriend you had in high school 30 years ago. Today you are married and you cannot move on. So that you will be free. So that you will know what is eating up you up. And you shall be free now to worship the Lord. And to serve the Lord in holiness. Come out of vile affections in Jesus mighty name. Our time is up. We want to worship the Lord and finish the service. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We worship you. Let us worship the Lord. We will finish the topic next Sunday. God willing. In Jesus mighty name. Thank you for following through. We worship you, Jesus. To my good Mungua, yes, to the Mungu, the Pana, or Mapuana, the Mungua, the Mungu. Jesus has imputed his righteousness on us. Come out of fine affections, child of God. I worship you, King of all the glory. You are what the mighty God of Israel Nasina mungu mingine wakuabudu Nina kuabudu wa subu ya leo Wewe ulindaye Israeli na ulali Jehovah Wewe uzungukaye Jerusalem na manangwa ya moto Nina kuabudu Tumuabudu bwana utukufu na eshima ni zake We worship you king of all kings Tuna kushukuru tuna kuabudu wa sande kwa kazi ya msalaba Kama siu msalaba wengine ya tunge kuwa hapa we worship you, my Lord. We adore you, mighty God of Israel. You are worthy. You are worthy, King of all the glory. Where when you are where to overcome Your name is a strong tower. Man, people in the same time, I have one and in God's name. Now, when you are here, you are in the name We give you praise. We give you honor, my God. The Bible says vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Our people treated you wrongly. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Glory belongs unto God. We worship you, mighty God of Israel. I adore you. I adore you, mighty God of Israel. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for redeeming me. Today you enter the holy of holies because of the blood of Jesus. You enter the holy of holies because of the blood of Jesus. It is God who that has power to perfect you, to present you holy. Yes, 
God will teach you his wisdom. God will get you out of the vile affections. God will destroy immorality, sexual lust out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, we worship you, my God. If you go to an early grave, if you to be an ascending father, if you go to prison because of some of these things, don't lose your prophetic destiny because of spiritual sex. Ah, oh, we worship you. Have you not heard anybody who joins himself to a prostitute becomes one? Ah, oh, we worship you, mighty God of Israel. Deliver us, Jehovah God. Deliver us from the bondage of immorality. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we worship you, King of all the glory. We need to pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for the word that you have given us this morning, Lord. We are grateful, mighty God of Israel. I cover your children with the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those of you that need deliverance, us from masturbation. Father, deliver them. You are the God with the power to destroy sin and the power of sin. And as they surrender to you, my God, make them new vessels, my God. Clothe them with your sanctification and your righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we worship you, King of all the glory. Where we have fallen short of your glory, we bring you our sincere repentance. In the mighty name of Jesus, get your children out of the bondage of pornography. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have said you are holy God. We should live holily in sanctification, in total purity. In your past mighty God of Israel, let the Spirit of God perfect us until we see the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for the grace of sanctification, the grace of perfection. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive grace to man your own vessel in sanctification and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord help you. And the Lord help me in the mighty name of Jesus. For in that holy there shall enter nothing that is unclean. May the Lord sanctify you. May the Lord purify you. Deliver you from coarse, just foolish talking. Oh, may the Lord deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I worship you, my Lord. I adore you, King of all the glory. You are highly lifted, my God. From generation to generation, you have been our hiding place, my God. The present help in the time of trouble a strong tower and a refuge my God we look unto you mighty God of Israel we worship you king of all the glory let the power of sanctification come upon us in the mighty name of Jesus deliverance belongs to you Lord you said your word is truth and by that truth thou shalt sanctify us sanctify us my Lord deliver us cause us to hate what you hate deliver us from the hand of a strong man the Bible says you can never plunder a strong man until you first bind the strong man and attack the goods because the strong man keeps goods that don't belong to him. I bind the strong man in your life in the mighty name of Jesus and by power and anointing I begin to plunder what he has taken from you in the powerful mighty name of Jesus. All the years that you have wasted in immorality as you repent and seek the Lord I pray the Lord shall repay you he shall repay you he shall restore you in the mighty name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Lord, give us grace to be holy. Make us holy for you. Make us righteous for you, my Lord. Clothe us with your purity in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't want to carry sexually transmitted demons in our lives. For the body we carry is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sanctify us, Lord. For the Holy Ghost cannot live in a temple that carries filthiness. Help us, mighty God of Israel. We are the generation that you spoke about in 2 Timothy. That we are living in perilous times. Oh, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. We cannot lead ourselves. I pray for the Spirit of God to show us direction. We worship you, mighty Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have never received Jesus, the Bible has said if you don't hear the voice of God, he will hand you over to the stubbornness of your heart so that you follow your own counsel. There is a way that looks good to man, but the end of it is death. When you're refusing Jesus, you are telling him you can man your life. 
Satan is no man's friend. You cannot man your life. If you hear this word, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I beseech you to make Jesus the Lord and the Savior of your heart. And that your name be written in the book of life. That is the only time you can defeat sin. When you are in the world, you cannot defeat sin. Because that kingdom sin is its oxygen. But when you come to the Lord, he will teach you holiness. He will teach you sanctification. We worship you, Jesus. I love you from the deepest part of my heart. And I don't have another God to run to, my God. Purify my life. I don't want to preach this gospel and get lost. Purify me, mighty God of Israel. Purify me, I want heaven from heaven that you may look upon me as a servant and smile in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Have a good day. It's already afternoon. See you on Friday or Sunday, God willing, in Jesus' mighty name. I love you and the Lord loves you. Remember to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah.